It's a new thing on Zoom, so a lady shouting at you, telling you that the meeting is recorded. So, hi guys, uh, we're joined here today uh, with Kieran, uh, Kieran Griffin, who is an expert in marketing, and we use his services at Compass Physio. So, um, we always like to share things with people, and you know get them started and get them the basics. But I said we get Kieran on and um, he came to us via a one of the guys in the Practice Nav Plus uh, group, Paddy has been using them and Helena's used them. So yeah, we just said let's give it give it a try and see and we've been happy with the service. So um yeah Kieran, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and uh, what the story is. Yeah, cool. Uh, so thanks for having me on, Colin. Uh, so my name is Kieran. I'm a, I'm a carry man, a young entrepreneur. I'm only 25 years of age, but I started my business journey just over two years ago, probably two and a half years ago at this stage. So I run a online advertising agency called AdSuite. And what we basically do in simple terms is we just help people or businesses to generate more leads online or more sales, depending on what their business is, through Google, Instagram, and Facebook ads. So to Peter back uh, a few a few steps um went to university in ul uh, studied business majored in marketing i suppose how i got into uh, business and, and more specifically digital marketing after i got back from an eight-month internship in luxembourg for as part of my work placement i got a job with a limerick startup uh, called trackworks so what they do is they're, they're a patient location tracking system uh, to improve the efficiencies of, of hospital procedures and stuff like that. And with them, they're three young guys from Limerick, and it really inspired me to uh, give me an insight into running my own business. And then more specifically, I was doing their digital marketing. So that's kind of how I, I found the love for digital marketing, because in my course in UL, we were doing a lot of branding and, and kind of communication style modules with no actual digital marketing. So it was kind of nearly a new world for me. You know, you, you would expect that a very uh, modern uh, forward thinking college would have digital marketing modules, but we didn't. So that really got my interest. And I kind of, what I did was I started doing a bit of freelance work um, and worked uh, freelance doing SEO, social media, and eventually landed a dental clinic in Dublin, who was my first advertising client. And once we got him set up uh, and we saw, or I saw the, the immediate results that an ad campaign can get, as opposed to social media or SEO, where you're waiting months on end for any kind of results, the advertising thing, it gave me that instant, I suppose, gratification of something working. And then I said, how can I offer this to more people? Because it was working really well for him. Um, and then that's when I met Paddy. Uh, and, and he was my first physio, physio client and he's my longest uh, standing client to date. Uh, and I started getting him really good results on Facebook ads and Google ads. And then that brings me into uh, working with a lot, of, a lot of physios in the group and even uh, in other countries. OK, so uh, based on that, I'm just going to peel that back a bit because people will freak out going, what's a lead? So can you explain in simple terms what a lead is, first of all? Yeah, so a lead is a person's name, email, and phone number in exchange for something that they're interested in or some piece of information. So a lead is someone who may need your service or may be interested in using your service, but they're just handing over their, their personal data in exchange for something such as a free report on 10 tips to relieve lower back pain. Okay, so... For all those now freaking out, you mentioned the word data or data or whatever you want to say it or whatever, yeah. That's all GDPR compliant because they're giving you the information in exchange for the 10 tips on lower back pain. Yes. Yeah, okay. So lads, don't be freaking out. It's okay to get leads, right? So following on from that, you get the lead, you get their name, you get their phone number and date of birth maybe or email. What generally happens next? Yeah, so I suppose um, a lot of it, it depends on the type of business, but we'll talk about specifically for physios. Um, so when a person is, is, is handing over their details, you need to consider what platform they're on. So if you're getting a person's details. I'll from, stop you there. 
what do you mean by platform? So, platform. so I, I'm just asking some of the questions yeah. because, you know, it's like we're talking at a, at a level that we know we're exposed to it for a long period of time, but the guys sometimes they'd be going, oh, shit, shit, what is a platform? Yeah, no matter. I'll, I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. platform is Facebook, Instagram, or Google. Okay. All right, they're, they're your platforms. They're the ones that I deal with. So when you're on Facebook, if you can imagine you're at home, when do you go on Facebook and why? It might be half time of dirty news and you just, you don't want to look at ads on TV. So you want Facebook instead. And instead of seeing an ad on TV, you're seeing uh, an ad one, one in every four posts. And so that person is going on it to either look at statuses or photos of their friends and family. Maybe they're looking to find updates of the euros or whatever the case may be. But what they're definitely not doing is they're going on Facebook to buy or to, to book an appointment. They might be interested in getting some information for a problem they have if the ad is relevant to them. And that has to be for free. So when a person sees that ad and they click on it, they go to a page or web page and they hand over their name, email and phone number. What the best practice to do next is try getting contact with them as soon as possible. The reason I say that is because when a person is doing that action, submitting their personal details, a lot of the time they're doing it kind of almost without thinking. It's nearly automatic. So while they're in that mind frame, you need to try getting in contact with them because if they're watching the news and it's half time and they submit their contact details, and they go back watching the news and then have dinner with their family and then talk to friends, they've forgotten what they've done. So then if you leave it too long and then you make contact with them, they're like, who's this? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't download nothing. So what you really need to do is get in contact with them as soon as possible through a phone call. If you cannot get in contact with them through a phone call, maybe it might be because you're out, you're out of office, you want to make sure that you have an automated email sequence or, or system set up and i know you're going to say well oh, what's a so that's like mailchimp or something MailChimp. similar to mailchimp okay MailChimp or, or anything you have similar yeah. to that Fusion soft or keep or up keep or one yeah yeah okay now if that's the case whereby that lead has come in um at a time it might be nine o'clock at night and you don't see that lead to the next morning uh you i suppose you want to try a few different things. You want to try ringing them at different parts of the day because a lot of people are different. They might be at work. They might be doing the school run. Uh, they might be on lunch. So only ringing them. If you're dedicating a half hour in the morning to ring your leads and it's not working, it's not that it's not working. It just might be a bad time for your leads. You know, you want to be contacting them at, at different times of the day because they're in different scenarios. So never give up straight away for trying to get in contact with that, that person. Maybe do two to three follow-ups and try different days of the week. Would you leave a message? Always leave a message on the first call. Defo. And, and if, if you can, I, I know a lot of people are saying this is a bit too much or a bit too personal, but just from my, my experience, if you can, if, if they leave a mobile number, WhatsApp, a lot of people won't answer a call on a phone as a regular phone call but they'll answer a WhatsApp phone call because a lot of the time they can see the profile picture and it's, it's someone they recognize or it's the logo of your company or whatever the case may be. Try different avenues. So don't always just rely on one time, one day of the week and, 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 and one communication channel. Try different things. Okay. And what's the biggest mistakes then? So people go, I'm going to do this AdWords to spend, I've got 300 euro on my budget or I'm going to try Facebook ads, I've got 300 euro or 500 euro, whatever they think. What's the biggest mistakes that you've seen in the healthcare industry? Yeah, so there's a lot of mistakes out there. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, sometimes when I come on in at a new account and I'm like, oh, what have you been doing until now? And they're like, oh, I've just been boosting posts 20 euro here and there. Do not do that. When you're boosting a post for 20 euro, you might as well put your 20 euro through a shredder, right? It's not going to achieve anything all facebook is going to do when you boost a post is it's going to put that post in front of people who are just on social media all day and you'll get a reach of maybe five or ten thousand and you'll think oh this is great and then you'll wonder why am i getting any sales from it 
the biggest mistake is not having or not clearly defining what the outcome of your ad or campaign needs to be. So if it's a Google ad, you need to define what your outcome is. Is it a person booking an appointment online? Is it them making a, a phone call to your uh, front of desk team? Is it them filling in a form to have a telephone consultation with a physio? Or if it's on Facebook, where are you sending them to, right? If you run uh, or if you boost a post and if you just send them to your website, your, your homepage and just hope for the best, then the chances are nothing's gonna happen. You want to have your ads talking about one specific thing, one specific problem. Such and as knee pain or lower back pain or ankle pain, okay. <clears throat> a lot of, yeah, that's a, that's a big mistake is not talking about one specific thing because that's how you're going to grab a person's attention. So there's going to be a lot of people scrolling, maybe one in 10 people who might have knee pain and they're the ones you want stopping and looking at, at it because you're talking about knee pain. You're not talking about, oh, I offer physio and Pilates services that you know people want to be spoken to and um, directly and personally so once you define that you need to define where you're sending them to so is it going to be your home page or is it going to be a dedicated knee pain landing page where you're offering a free webinar at the end of the month to help them with that specific pain you'll have two questions on that one explain landing page so a landing page is is like a web page except it doesn't have your about us at the top it doesn't have your blog section or your news. It's just a, a page on the web that deals with one specific thing. Uh, talks about, let's say, let's stay on the topic of knee pain. Talks about knee pain, for, uh, some of the problems they might be having with their knee pain, um, honing in on that kind of, that, that pain point. Uh, some of the solutions that you're offering for their knee pain. If it's a webinar, why they should attend that webinar, what benefit they're going to get out of it. And you only can have one button or one call to action. So call to action is your button on that web page so that a person is forced to only take one specific action. They don't have the option of... Don't give them a choice. Don't give them a choice. Only give them one choice. And you're, that's how you're going to increase the chances of your outcome. So that button could be book on our webinar, download our free report, Call the clinic to make a free 15-minute appointment or book in online for your appointment to sort your knee out. Or whatever, exactly. whatever, whatever the whole idea is behind it. Okay, cool. Now I'll I'll go on to another one other mistake, because that's generally Facebook. I'll talk about a, a big mistake I see with people on Google. And one of the biggest mistakes is not having the correct campaign structure. So you might have a, a campaign. And you might want to promote all the different kind of treatments that you offer. Sorry, just campaign then. Just can you, like a campaign is one specific, I'm going to spend 500 euro a month on this. Or is it, like, is that what you mean by campaign or? Yeah. So your campaign is, is, is your campaign is your overall objective. Okay. So you might have an objective saying, I want to get more patients. I want to get more patients in the door actually booking online. So that's, that's your campaign objective. And then below that, you have a range of different patients. So you might have some for back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, knee pain. Okay, so you want to be getting it out in front of all those different types of patients for the overall objective. So your campaign structure would look like uh, conditions is, is, is your, your, your topic. And then your subtopics are knee pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, and so on. And so once you have those sub uh, topics, what you're able to do then is bid on keywords such as how to fix my knee pain or knee pain specialist near me or whatever the case may be. When a person is typing in that keyword into Google, they only want to see text or they only want to see an ad relevant to them. So that's why you need to have the correct structure because if you're bidding on a word say back pain or back pain relief, you don't want that person seeing an ad talking about knee pain or shoulder pain. So you really need to separate it and make sure your ads are only being seen by the people who want to see them. Okay, so again, it's going back to getting specific. 
getting specific, having a plan, having a structure, and just thinking it out beforehand. You know, some people just go in with a two feet and put up their money, set their budget and run it without any prior planning. And then the 500 euro doesn't generate any results and they're saying it doesn't work. You need to have structure. You need to clearly define your outcome. Okay. And so with that then, it, like, so if we don't talk about paid advertising, so people might be going, oh, well, that's all well and good, but I, I don't have any of the basics, right? So before you would think about going to paid Facebook or paid Google, what are, what are the key things that people need to ensure they have in place before they start, like, giving money away to Facebook to shred it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you have your Facebook homepage and you have your Google My Business page set up. What else would you say is other key, key important factors? Yeah, so um, yeah, I suppose you, there, there are some of the key things, key things that you said. I suppose if you're running an ad on, on Facebook or Instagram, um, sometimes a person might go to that account and see if they're active. So you want to have an active account. You want to be posting regularly. They want to, they're going to want to see a post definitely within the past week so if you're running an ad and they instead of clicking the ad they go to your facebook page and they see that you haven't posted since 2015 they're going to think they're going to think that you're close and you're not you're not operating so you, you definitely want to make sure you're posting consistently on, on social media that's free to do and uh if you don't know what to post just think all you have to do is pick up a phone take a picture of your clinic your team or something to show the people behind it and write a little caption as if you're talking to one of your patients. It's very, you don't need to overcomplicate it. So that's, that's probably one of the main tips. The other thing, your Google My Business account, you want to make sure that you have your hours, your locations, all of that set up. Um, reviews are very, very important. You want to have social proof and credibility. So every single patient that comes in the door, ask them for a review. They're good, you'd be surprised at the amount of people that would be happy to leave you a review. Um, so get your Facebook reviews up and get your Google reviews up and make sure you have five stars. Um, other than that, your website, I suppose, needs to be structured around your, your, your object or it needs to integrate with your, the way you operate, right? So instead of, let's say, for instance, um, having a facility on your website to book an appointment, um, but they can't actually book an appointment without having a prior uh, phone consult with, with the physio or with the team. Don't tell, don't tell the person that they can book an appointment. Say request an appointment or schedule a call with, with her uh, physical therapist. Okay. Make sure that your website is set up to meet the person's expectations. Um, so they're probably some of the key things that, that you should be doing before I'd, you ever consider. I'd, I'd probably add into that is, is having the time then to dedicate to any leads that you generate. It may not be you, but it could be your admin. If you don't have an admin, I'd suggest hiring one, but like you, you need to set time aside to work on this because if you spend 500 euro on Facebook ads, great. But if you don't have time to process a seminar or follow up on the leads, it's a waste of time getting the, getting the information off to people then because you're not going to engage with them. So again, you need yeah. to set time to, to work on your business uh, and yeah, that's the, one of the key things I'd say is having time to process the the leads and the, the information gathered. Yeah, I'll, I'll emphasize that that point a bit more, Colin. Like you're, you're completely right. Sometimes, I mean, I've I've learned from from my mistake in the past, but not by not making sure that if I take on a client, they need to have a process in place to follow up with the leads. Because I've been in the in the, in the situation whereby uh, a client has come to me with a problem. I'm not getting enough leads, right? We'll get you set up with your campaign. Here's 100 leads coming in every month. Now they don't have any time or process in place to follow up with those leads. So not only the money they've spent on getting the leads, but also the money they've spent on my services to get the campaign up and running has all gone to waste. And it's just an even bigger problem. So yeah. really emphasizing that point, have a process in place. So ha have the plan done as you said before you're going up, um, on with this make sure you have someone in line to take the, the 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 detail from the patients and to book them in and stuff and, and then you need people to treat the patients to give them the best service yeah so yeah, yeah. there's a lot okay. to think about yeah 
All right, what other ones do I have for you here? Um, the barriers. Yeah. So if you had a hundred euro, or no, say if you had three hundred euro, what at the moment would you be spending it on? Would it be Google, Facebook, or Instagram? Facebook. Why? Okay. So Facebook. Uh, now, before I get into that, <laughs> I should I should have. I, Taking a step back there, it depends on your business, right? Okay, well, depends on the avatar type thing. Depends on the avatar, right? Like, let's say, for instance, let's say, for instance, you're you have a clinic, and you are, are already booked up, which is is a common enough uh, scenario whereby you don't have enough physios to take on more patients, or whatever the case may be. So, spending money on Google Ads trying to get more appointments just doesn't make sense. Right. What you need to be doing is spending that 100 or 300 euro. This is what I would do on Facebook ads and growing your list so that you're, you now ha- are in a situation whereby your clinic is, is, is full. You have enough people booked in. But when the time does come that you're looking for new patients, you already have a list of people nurtured who, who and nurtured just means they've received information from you. They know your name. They know your brand. They know the service you provide. So that when the time does come that they need your service or they need to book in for an appointment, the first person they think of is you. So always building your list, always have a nice fresh list, continuously try to build it, whether it be through a newsletter, whether it be through something on your website, such as a free report that they can download and get, or whether it just be through a webinar. Always have something going whereby you're growing your email list, your contact list, so when the time does come where you need to take on new patients, you have a list that you can tap into for free. Okay, so you're emailing that, those people directly because you can email them because they have given you GDPR. Yes. So you can email them, guys. It's okay. Right, okay, very good. Yeah, that makes sense. So it would be Facebook. If you're flat out and you're a busy business owner and you're going, I don't need to spend money on marketing at the moment and flat out. The problem comes then when you're trying to take on a new person to reduce your hours. People don't like, not that they don't like them, but they don't know them. So you need to start uh, direct mailing them then, which is another form of marketing. And it's potentially free then if you have the likes of MailChimp or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then just explain avatar. So your avatar is your ideal target audience, right? So you might have... Right, my ideal avatar is a uh, uh, fellow from Kilkenny who is, uh, I don't know what age I'm going to guess, uh, he owns a clinic, uh, has two kids, and basically, or has, a, I don't know how many kids you have, but has a few kids, so you know, right, this is your avatar, you know what he does in his day-to-day life, what his problems are, where his time has been spent, uh, what his desires are. Once you know those things, and you know this is your kind of example person, um, when you are going to design any type of marketing material or an ad campaign, you can speak specifically to that avatar, right? So that you are being relevant and you're resonating. I think the word resonating is really important because only until you resonate with your audience, that's only when they're going to start listening to you. So you need to know your ideal patient is lifestyle. Are they into sports? What hobbies do they do they have? Are they what job do they generally work in? Are they working long hours? Know this information so that your marketing and your messaging is relevant to them. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's 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 so if we're doing Facebook ads, we're going right. My ideal avatar is mid forties, hairdresser, three small kids, active in the community, likes to blah blah blah. blah. We can hone in on that target audience then on on the Facebook metrics. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. So guys, we always talk about don't try and treat everyone. Just be specific around who you want to treat. Yeah. So and I suppose you go on. Yeah, I mean it's okay to have more than one avatar. Like you don't need just need to have one avatar for your for your whole business. You might have two or even three. But depending on what outcome you want from something, if it's an ad campaign, you need to focus on which avatar you're trying to get that outcome from you know who is it going to resonate with the most and once you have your ad, ad avatars already uh, prepared uh it's just a matter of gearing your campaign towards them 
And so we have Facebook at the moment. We have Google and Instagram is owned by Facebook, right? Yes. So when I say the word Facebook, you should automatically assume I'm also meaning Instagram. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So where do you see the industry going in the next three to four years? So I suppose, again, strictly speaking, uh, taking into consideration. Uh, We're going to hold you to this now, right? So I'm going to look back on this in three years' time and go, look, you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. Look, look it, there's a lot of things moving at the moment, but you need to know where your target audience is and where they're hanging out. Like generally, my target audience, maybe they're going to start being on Instagram, but majority of them are on Facebook because they're an older, dem an older demographic. They might be uh, 30 to 40 plus, right? They're, these are established business owners. But in three to four years time, where like, let's say for instance, if you're a physio, um, your, your audience might be going to YouTube which is going to be huge. They're not going to be to TikTok. TikTok is a massive thing that uh, people are, are trying to focus on and talk about at the moment. But unless your audience is below the age of 18, you don't need to consider it. And unless they're going to be 18 or above or, or, or maybe even 30 or above in the next three to four years, again, you don't need to consider it because most physios target audience is probably 30 plus. Um, so in three to four years, Facebook is still going to be around. Definitely. Instagram will be uh, YouTube will probably be more popular than ever. And I think I'm starting, I'm only starting to tap into it now myself. It's been around for years, but it's going to continue. Um, it's going to be a streaming service, just like Netflix, I would say. Um, so they're the platforms that you should really uh, place emphasis on and, and, and watch out. They're going to be the ones. And, and finally, you, you mentioned about like people getting in front of the camera maybe or doing a camera and people just don't like getting in front of the camera because they don't like talking about themselves, they don't like promoting themselves. Uh, what would your tips be for that? Like say if, 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 if I was to go on and do a Facebook Live now, I, I don't care anymore, what, not what people think, but I'm just like, oh yeah, Facebook Live because I've done it so, like I've become immune to it, like I've done it so much. It's like I'm not bothered by what people think or say about it because I know I'm giving good content. And it's the same for people in clinical skills that they have really good content to share, but they, they get that pit in their stomach, they're afraid to do it. Are there any tips that you've given business owners for making a live video? Like, is it keep it short? Is it, you know, just be specific? What, what's the, what would yeah. you say the tips are for that? 100%, keep it short. You'd be very, very surprised with how much time you rack up when you're talking. Like you'd be very surprised how fast one or two minutes will go by. You don't need to say that much. At the end of the day, have confidence in yourself. When you're going on a Facebook Live, you've studied for how many years, you work with how many hundreds or, or, or thousands of patients, you know your stuff, it's, you're just talking. I know a lot of people would freak out in, in front of a camera. And I remember myself at my first ever network, networking event whereby there was just people all over my screen and then I had to talk about myself and you, I was nearly sweating at the thought of it. But after, after you do it, you really, like, you, you don't realize how fast the time is going and how well you know more than you think and how well you, you bring that across because once you get into it and once you start speaking about it, you forget that you're on camera because you're so wrapped up in what you're talking about and what you know that it's just coming out without, without even thinking about it so it's just an initial fear once you do it once you'll realize it you know, like all that worry and stress about going on facebook live or recording a video of yourself how little it matters you know uh, look yourself look like i mean you know don't like look appear on camera in your everyday clothes or whatever the case may be Keep it short, keep it simple, talk about what you know, and the rest will flow naturally. Definitely wear clothes. Yeah. Oh, every day. Clothes. <laughs> okay. So the one thing, yeah, like I, I think with Zoom and stuff over the last day, 15, 16 months, people have definitely become more au fait with getting in front of the camera. And it's just it's just about getting out there, guys, because you know your stuff. So yeah. Now the next question obviously is 
how can people get in contact with you? Or like, what's the first step? Is there like a, a questionnaire they fill in if they want to get get more info, or what's the stuff like? If people want to chat to me about, you know, business structure that sort of stuff, if I'm looking for them to do marketing, I'll be referring you on to Kieran himself. So, what what do you think is the best structure for people? Is it just an email, email to you, or an email or phone call? I, I'm very approachable. I I will say that. No matter what way you contact me, contact me. I'm going to be suggesting one of two things: either you don't want to commit to a 30-minute meeting just yet. In that case, um, what I will do and what I offer on my website is a personalized video demo. So I use a software called Loom. I go onto your website, and I, I just record my screen, and I show you some possibilities that that are there for your website in terms of getting new patients or, or, or clients through an ad campaign. I'll show you some of the keywords you should be bidding on, the volume of those on a monthly basis. I'll just show you what you need to be doing and how that could benefit your business all in the screen recording. And if that sounds interesting and relevant to you, then you have the option of booking in what I call a strategy call. Now, if I don't suggest that video, I'll just be inviting you straight to the strategy call. It's a one-to-one call. I use Google Meet, similar to Zoom. You click the link and you join and I just ask you a few casual questions about you and your business and your goals and where you're going with it in the future and how I can help you reach those goals um, through ad campaigns. So it'll either be a recorded video or a one-to-one meeting with me. So if you ring me or if you email me, I'll be su- suggesting one of the two. Um, and after each of those, if it's something that you want to go ahead with, I'll tell you the next steps. If it's not, that's fine. We'll go our separate ways and we'll we'll be happy out. We'll we'll, we'll remain friends. <laughs> Very good. And it's uh, it's Kieran at adsuite.ie. Kieran at adsuite.ie. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, guys. Uh, any questions, put them up in the comments on the, the video below. I'm going to be sharing this across uh, our YouTube channel as well because Kieran said that's where that's where it's all going. So um, yeah. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time to chat to us, Kieran, and um, we'll be chatting again soon. Brilliant, appreciate it. I All hope right. you've gotten value of this. Yeah, thanks. take care. Bye bye.